Welcome back to Strength Coach Tutorials and in today's video we're going to take a look at how you might want to visualize your training load data if you're collecting data from multiple sources. So in this example I'm going to show you how to create um, a training load graph that shows both your practice and your strength and conditioning sessions data and also with the drop down menu you're going to be able to select what type of data you want to look at and then just like we did in Strength Coach Tutorials number 54 you're going to still have your rolling averages, your athlete drop down, and all of the relevant features um, from the previous training load videos. This is going to be really useful if you are collecting training load data from individual sessions, practice sessions, strength and conditioning sessions, and you want to look at it all on one chart. So let's get after it. Okay, and we're back. And as you can see, we're starting off with a sheet that looks the exact same as the one that we finished off strength coach tutorials number 54 with and all of the training load calculations and if you haven't had a chance to check out that video um, please click on the link that is on your screen now and go back and check out that video because that will get you up to this point and allow you to continue on to develop the the multiple training focus um, training load graph so Finish off with Strength Coach Tutorials number 54 and then come back and join number 56. Now, um, the second thing that I want to mention is that if you are finding any usefulness in these videos, please like and share the video as that really helps me out and allows me to really dedicate more time to making more videos for you. And if there are any suggestions, you can either fill out the form in the description below or you can post them in the comments and I'll try to make a future video that will answer your question. So now that that's all out of the way, let's get after this um, tutorial now. So <clears throat> in the intro, I had the, the bar chart here and it had different training stimuli on it. We had an SNC and a practice focus on the actual bar chart. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do that in this video and I have to or the first thing that I'm going to have to do is create some of that data. So we're going to create some training load data for athlete number one. And how we're going to do that is I'm just going to copy the same dates that I've already used, which are basically July 1st, 2020 through July 20th, 2020. And this is all random data. It's not really um, made after anything. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. So I'm going to control C and then I'm going to just paste it. I'm going to right paste values at the bottom and I'm going to keep all the dates and you can see that everything gets kind of like um, it just adds all of those dates in because the way that we set up our sheet before is that it keeps um, tracking everything that we're doing but what I want to do is I'm actually going to take these and now change them to practice because I want to actually track say practice training load as well so you can see now that all of these have become practice and um, it doesn't really fit on our chart the way we would like it to. So um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create the actual dummy data and I'm going to use a function called ran between for our RPE values which are typically measured between 1 and 10. So I'm going to use equals ran between and then it's going to ask me what's the bottom number. I'm going to use 1. And then what's the top number? I'm going to use 10. And then I'll hit enter. And it's going to give me numbers between 1 and 10. And I'll drag that down. And I'm just going to control C and then paste the values back in. Because every time you use ran between and change anything, it automatically changes the values. But I want them to stay um, the same all the way through. And then I'm going to use a very similar function for the actual time data. I'm going to use ran between, but I'm also going to use an M round, which rounds um, numbers to a specific multiple because I want this number to be rounded to the nearest 15 because I want to measure my training time in 15 minute increments. So I'm going to hit M round, open that up. It's going to ask me what the number I want is. And then I'm going to use the ran between here. And I want it between 15 minutes and let's say two hours, so 120 minutes. Close that off, put another comma, then it's gonna ask me the multiple and I'm gonna choose 15 and close that off and hit enter. And it is gonna give me 
numbers between 15 and 120 on 15 minute increments. And just like we did with the ran between before, we're gonna control C and then just control paste those in as values. And that's just a quick way that we can start to create some data. And then for our training load, we're actually going to multiply this out with a formula. I just had it, I just did it all uh, myself, but I'm gonna use a formula now. So I'm just gonna equal, put equals product because we're gonna multiply um, duration and time. And I'm just gonna click here. So it's gonna say multiply product from table RPE, um, from at RPE to time, and then close that off and hit okay. And then if I copy that all the way down, it should do that all for me. So now I just have a formula in there that is calculating out my values for me. So that's a quick way that you can create some of your own data that you can start to play with when you're creating some of these dashboards. And if you know the way that you're planning on creating your data, I'd say create a whole bunch ahead of time and make sure that your dashboards and your training load calculations work before you actually um, get too far into the project and, and have to start all over because it's not organized properly. Okay, so now that we have some actual practice data, so we have um, different practice data and this, we could do the same thing for games, we could do the same thing for individual skills, um, even academic stress if you wanted to, we could put some load values in there for that. But for the purposes of our project today, I'm just gonna keep it at the two variables, but just know that you could follow the same steps and add really as many values as you want. So what I wanna have happen is I want to be able to have a drop down up here where I can select my values and then based on what I select, it pulls all of that data into a spilled array and then I can graph that spilled array on my chart. Um, so that I can see all of my data really easily. But if you'll notice, now that we've entered all of our data and it's pulling out all the data for athlete one, you're gonna notice that it's gonna have two entries for 2001, 0101, 2020, 0102, 2020, 0103, because we have multiple entries on the same day. But I really only want it to pull out this date once. So if you remember the formula we used before, we used this sort filter function. And there's another useful function that we might wanna use here. And I'm basically gonna wrap the whole thing in what's called a unique formula. And we use the unique here to pull out the athlete names. But if I go to this formula that we already had and I take, go to the uh, beginning of it and I type unique, what unique does is it only pulls out values when they don't match. It's only gonna pull out one. So in this case, it's only gonna pull out one of each date. And then at the end of this formula, unique's always gonna ask me, do I wanna return unique rows, which is yes. So I click um, false in this case, and then return every distinct item or return items that appear exactly once. We wanna return every distinct item. And then when I close that off, what it's gonna give me is only the dates um, that we put in. And just to show you how this works, if I was to put in another date, like let's say 5, 30, 2020, it's gonna pull that date out. And again, because we've wrapped this whole thing in a sort, um, it's gonna pull it out from largest to smallest. So we know that this is gonna continually work um, every time that we add data, which is gonna be great, okay? So moving on, I'm gonna delete this row down here. <clears throat> the next thing that we have to make work is I wanna get these drop downs to work. So I'm just going to color these yellow so that I know that they're gonna be drop downs and put a little border around them and then color the font black. And this just tells me that those are um, cells that I can manipulate. And the same way that we pulled out the names um, with the unique function here, so that we could have a drop down up here. We're gonna do the same trick up here with our type, um, and I'm gonna just put that off to the side. So I'm gonna insert a cell here, and we're gonna put session type. And normally, if I was doing this as part of a larger project, I would have one sort of control panel or setting sheet where I would have all of these different types of calculations happening. 
and then reference that one sheet. But for the purposes of our project for this video, I'm just doing it all on the one sheet so that you can see how everything works. And I'm gonna put equals unique. And then I wanna select the table row for sessions and hit bracket and close that off. So you can see in this case, it's giving me SNC and practice. And again, if I was to add another type, say game, that function is also gonna pull out the game. So I'm going to delete that row. Now what we have to do is create a data validation for these values here. So I'm gonna do this the same way and I'll highlight both of these cells, go to data, data validation and list. And then what I'm gonna do is select the top row where the unique function is. And if you've watched any of my latest videos, you know what I'm gonna do next. I'll throw a hashtag at the end so that we're referencing the entire spilled array and then hit the arrow icon and OK. And what we're gonna have now is drop downs where we can choose the type of session that we actually want to um, pull out. Now, from here it's pretty easy. We're just gonna edit um, some of the formulas. So I'm just gonna copy this formula and use it in right here. And so what this formula is doing is it's a sum ifs formula, so it's saying sum the values if they match a whole host of criteria. And because there's only gonna be one value that matches that criteria, we're only gonna sum one value, which will just end up being the actual value out of the training load um, column. So for example, in this, um, in this formula, it's saying sum table RPE training load if table RPE date is equal to um, J4, and then it's the um, it's the whole array, so that is going to keep moving down as we move down. So which one is equal to J4? Um, and then also if the athlete name matches J1, which is up here, we just have to add one more argument to this, and it is um, if table or uh, table RPE, and then session. And we wanna do that if it is equal to, in this case, K3. And I'm gonna lock that in with the F4. And that's just putting dollar signs around the whole thing. And now what we're saying is we wanna filter it out if it matches the date, if it matches the athlete, and if it matches the session type. So when I hit enter, what you're gonna notice is that it's gonna pull out all of those values. And for some unknown reason, this one was formatted funky as a date. So I'm just gonna change that all back and I'll just put it to general. And so now what you're seeing is that we're actually filtering everything out only if it matches these criteria. And if we change this to practice, you'll see that it's going to change the data that it actually filters out. So the same thing we can do this, we can do the exact same formula. I'm just gonna copy this formula and we're gonna use it in the next cell over. So I'm gonna hit paste, but we gotta change just a couple of things. Instead of K3, it's gonna be L3 that we're referencing. And instead of, nope, J4 works, J1 is works and table training load and then hit enter. So now we have both of our SNC and our practice. And you can see we can set this up really any way that we want. And because of the way we set up our graph before, you can see that this is already starting to change based on the values that we pick. Now from here, it's just a, there's just a couple more steps. So we're gonna make our different named ranges. And for the purposes of this video, um, we're gonna make a named range out of this one here. So I'm gonna go to data, sorry, I'm gonna to go to formula, define name, and we're gonna call it video metric one. And all that means is that is the first metric in the first column. And I'm gonna reference the whole darn thing. So it's K4, but then we're gonna use the hashtag and hit okay. And we'll do the same thing for the next one. And we'll go video, whoops, video, metric two and again I want to reference the whole thing so we'll use the hashtag and now let's go to our chart 
and I can right click anywhere on my chart and hit um, select data. And now instead of S and C, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit this one here. And where I want it to refer to the title, I'm just gonna put it on metric one, which is K3, hit okay. And then as a series value, before we had video training load, we could keep that in there, but I'm just gonna call it video metric one, hit okay. So you can see that it's now changed to practice load. And we'll do the same thing now for the next one. Um, select data and hit add the series name. We want it to be um, L3, hit okay. And then the series value we want here. We get this whole, well, we'll go here. But then instead of L4, we want this to actually reference video metric two, hit okay. So there we have it. So what you're gonna see is it's actually added that as another series. Make sure that that's turned on, okay. Apply, yep. And I'm gonna change this series now. I'm gonna hit um, right click, select data, and I should be able to move this up so that it's in line with practice and SNC. So metric one and two are hanging out beside each other. So there's our actual metric two, which in this case is SNC. And now I'll go to, I'll right click on here and go to change chart type. And it's gonna give me the option to pick a different type of chart. And in this case, we're gonna use a stacked column chart. And I'm gonna change S and C to a stacked column chart as well. And when I hit okay, what you're gonna notice is now Excel has actually stacked those together and totaled them. So we have 450, um, practice volume, um, sorry, practice training load, and we have 900 um, SNC practice training load or training load, and so we have a total of 1350, I think, um, and you can see that all the way along. <clears throat> and notice that we still have our rolling averages. It's going to look a little funky because we're also including athlete two, and the numbers are all made up. But again. We can still go to however many days we want to look at for our rolling averages. And if for whatever reason we wanted to change this to another metric, we can do that quite easily. And it becomes a really um, powerful graph that we can use to um, change our, uh, or to, sorry, to monitor our workload. Now, one other thing you might wanna do, instead of having these both colored yellow to make your life easy, Maybe we could do something where, say this one is colored blue, and then this one is colored red. And then in our actual chart, if we right click here and go to format, or well, we can just use fill right here, and I could make that one red. So then you can easily look and know that, oh, practice is blue and SNC is red. And we could just easily look at our chart and see that. And you can play around with the colors really however you want, and it should give you, um, a nice looking chart that you can use to visualize all of your training data. So um, that's, that's how you pull that off. Um, I hope this trick helps you out and helps you start to create some workload monitoring dashboards or maybe you wanna use this for different fitness testing results or something else. Um, but hopefully that this helps you out. And quick reminder, if you like this video, please share it, please subscribe to the channel, please comment, all of that stuff. And if you want to find me on social media, you can find me on Instagram or Twitter at DSM Strength. And feel free to reach out. And I love talking about anything Excel or talking shop. So hope to see you at the next video. And thanks for watching.